Welcome. This is yet another episode of todebate.net. I am Sebastian, your co-host. My that means I have a co-host and he's right there in front of me in this virtual reality that is a computer screen. Hello, Dirk. How are you today? You're my co-host yet again. Always you, isn't it? Yeah, you're stuck with me. So oh it, it, forever and ever. Forever and ever. I mean, since you live forever, we got a debate forever. <laughs> and that's that means you're stuck with me. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I guess so. I guess you know, I guess we're not too far away from that, are we? So if we do that forever and ever, we we gotta be ahead of the curve. If you want to be ahead of the curve, I think you need to have universal uh, basic income because in that case you can expand your learning and your training. I was yeah. about to ask what uh, what we, when we are going to tell our listener today's motion. Oh, is it today's motion? Oh, yes. wow, what a coincidence! Yeah, I, for some reason there's always something happening. It's always a good coincidence that. <laughs> The motion I have to defend <laughs> is exactly what you know the truth is all about. So yeah. today's motion is universal income is good to solve poverty. Is a good way to solve poverty. Yeah. Let me repeat that. Universal base income is a good way of solving poverty. That's today's, That's motion. today's motion. And as usual, uh, we decide randomly which side we're going to defend. So I am going to defend the motion and you're going to be against it and you'll be starting. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. Let me get one thing straight. I love the idea of a universal base income. Uh, most of the time when I hear discussions about the universal base income though, it turns out that the people discussing it mean something else than the original idea. Most of the time, actually, people don't mean the universal income, meaning like everyone gets a base income. And sometimes people don't actually mean a base income. So there are experiments going on that sometimes make it the news, like the one in Finland, that turn out to be, well, a part of the idea, but not the full thing. So a universal base income, the general idea being everyone gets a base income that covers life cost of that person. And... The, uh, the romantic idea is this will solve poverty and enable people to uh, follow their dreams. There are several challenges to that idea. Number one, if you do the math, that's a lot of money. That money has to be generated first. So do we have that much money? I don't know. There are a number of models so far. I have doubts about the models I've seen. Number two, and that's something that bugs me really, if you raise the income level of everyone by the same amount, I think the logical way for markets to react is to adjust prices. And if we adjust prices, because the market just knows that everyone has, let's say, a thousand bucks every month in their pocket, no matter what, and all of a sudden the, the level of, let's say, housing goes a thousand bucks up, you're back to square one very, very fast. And third, not least, we live in a global society. Either you do universal based income for everyone in that global society or you're bound to break. And I don't think this is realistic. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his argument. I'm going to talk about robots. We had a debate a few weeks ago, a few months ago, about robots eating our jobs. Now this means two things with robots that talks about productivity on one end with robots and artificial intelligence and everything that's happening in that field there's a bit of a bleak future ahead whereby um, people will not have jobs or look at the unemployment rate in europe despite productivity having increased over the past decades unemployment remains quite high on average so we're going to have a, a problem here with people not in jobs and not and relying on subsidies and various support from the state. So this is why one solution of having the base income and just deleting all the subsidies to just make it more simple. And that way we don't go into the risk of fraud and people pretending they're unemployed when they're not. And just simplifies all the whole administration and the maths can actually work. Now there's another angle to productivity. There's a very famous economist in the 30s, uh, John Maynard Keynes, which had foreseen that productivity would increase so much and in fact, he was accurate in his predictions. Productivity would increase by sixfold by the end of the century. 
And he was estimating that we would we would have 15 hour work weeks, so only working three hours a day. Now this clearly has not happened, and that's, there's a number of explanations for that. Some people like working in a corporate environment, and some people, or most people, have increased their expectations. For instance, they would not be you know happy with just a very simplistic smartphone. They want to have the high end Pixel phone. So here's the thing: uh, why can't we have the choice? If I want to have, let's say, a 15 hour a uh, week job and take the time to be creative, be artistic, write on my free time and not earn money for that because there's not always money to be made everywhere, then I should be allowed to do this. And it's possible. And this is why with a gradual shift of mindset, we could possibly get there because the maths work and, and it's not just a theoretical concept. It actually has worked in a number of cases, which I'll get back into in my three minutes. So yes, I'm totally in, in favor of su supporting universal basic income among other things, to solve the poverty issue. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. The math has worked, you say. Well, the fact of the matter is, we never so far attempted to do a universal base income. Because you cannot do that gradually. The whole point of the universal base income is that you're not shifting money from one part of society to another like current systems do. The whole point of the universal base income is that you have a common level established. Now, the core idea I very much subscribe to, the core idea being that having a kickstart in money enables you to do whatever you desire to do. Your final statement was that people will go on working and adding value. Hey, I totally believe in that. I believe people are just not wired to sit around all day and don't do anything. There will be a critical mass of people doing things. What I'm disputing, though, is that it's realistic to pay for it. And that's realistic to pay for it at the scale that would be required for that. And last not least, that the assumption is wrong that the markets just will stay at the same price levels because that's like the underlying assumption. The underlying assumption is we freeze the markets like they are right now and then we put everybody in everybody's pockets a thousand bucks extra. Actually, people are more talking about like a thousand five hundred that should be like the minimum level, but those numbers vary. And once we have done that, then those people will consume and that consume will generate money and a trade and everything. But the underlying assumption always is the market will stay the same. And I just dispute that to start with. Let's say we could push a button and uh, have universal base income. The minimum level at which we need to do that is the, the market we are in. So you cannot do it just for a city or just for one country. You actually have to do it for or the whole space in which people can move freely. In our case, in your and mine, that would be at least the European Union, where you have Schengen and people can move freely and work everywhere. So that's a market space with about, well, 500 million people, um, or soon to be 500 million people. And if you uh, calculate that times 1,500 bucks each, then you are in the $750 trillion cost per month. And now you explain to me in what model that makes sense. And uh, the, other, the other point is the result of having such a universal base income would just be that prices go up. They might not go up immediately. They might go up over time, but they will go up until the having a thousand five hundred bucks in your pocket is a new normal is the one thing that you require to actually do anything. And then the whole point of the universal base income is disputed. Because the problem is not that we don't have money. The problem is that we live in a society where you have to exchange time for money. And this will not go away just by having a universal base income. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear it. It may surprise some of our listeners, but the idea of this universal basic income um, is actually quite widespread, um, whether in poor countries, but also rich countries like Switzerland or France, uh, even the US. Um, there's been some uh, experiments in some villages in India. Actually, all the experiments have worked. So yes, they're in a, in a very limited uh, format, uh, geographic-wise, uh, whether it was Alaska or this village in India, or these couple of villages in the state in India. But they actually have worked. And this is what I mean by gradual. Um, I do understand your point about uh, the difficulty of making the actual practical implementation of changing the entire system in a in a region or a country. Um, but my point is more about changing the mindset initially 
So by adapting people and showing them that they can actually decide what to do with their time, which is unusual for now. For instance, uh, you know the, the, be, the default assumption is that you have to go work full time uh, to be able to make a living. And we're not talking about making you rich with this basic income. It is a basic income. And this is where I don't think you'll have an inflation problem. Why? Because by, uh, and by the way, it's not $1,500. This depends on the country. In Switzerland, it's way more. Uh, what they what we voted on or what the citizens voted on in India it would be way less so we're not uh, talking about the same amount it's really to go and why is that is to go above the poverty line not to make you rich not to be able for you to be able to to buy the latest iPhone or the latest drone or the latest TV or the latest Tesla right it's a, it's for you not to starve and this is a, a major difference for you to buy food for for you to be able to actually have a home to live in. Um, but not the fancy place. So that's why I don't think it will affect inflation. We're talking about the basic needs. And the rich people, they don't need the money, so it's not going to change their habits. They're not going to consume more or less. Uh, they may even give away the money to other things to fund create, like creative projects. Another example, it doesn't have to be art you know, art or these kind of things, but all the things that people currently do but don't get compensated for. For instance, taking care of the elderly, taking care of your own parents or grandparents, you know, today, I'll give you my personal example. I go and see my 94, 94 year old grandfather only on a Sunday because I work the other, the other, the other, the rest of the week and he lives far away. So it's not easy for me to go. But if I were compensated in some way, well, maybe I could just spend a week there because I know I don't have the burden or the stress to actually make money all the time uh, to pay for my rent or for my bills or whatever it is. So just having just enough so I can just eat and just be there with my grandfather and i think that's the case of everyone on this planet we all have family of some kind most of us at least um so that's a, another example and the maths i'm not going to debate on that i think there's a lot of controversy on this i think honestly at the planet level there's plenty of money the problem is it's not distributed properly and with this base income i think it actually allows for some better distribution it may not be the the ideal solution but it allows to distribute things a bit better. And maybe we can tax the rich people a bit more. I don't mind being ta taxed a bit more to be able to fund such a system. And finally, I'm going to close on something which is maybe slightly funny, but I actually mean it totally, is that if you allow people not to, not to have to go to work, well, maybe the people who are around us are bad performers at work will not show up. It will make it actually less toxic of a work environment because they'll just stay at home. They get paid a little bit, enough not to starve and eat pizza, and they will not annoy our teams with not being, you know, good uh, professionals. And um, it may sound funny, but I actually mean that very much. So yes, I think overall the base income can help alleviate poverty problems. Final statements. Dirk goes first. All right. You keep saying universal base income has been tried. No, it has not. What you described is just giving money to a selected group of people. And that is not the same thing. That means they all of a sudden have a thousand bucks or 500 bucks or what have you more in their pocket than the others around them. And that's a different story. You also mentioned, oh, if you, somebody would take away that burden uh, to earn a living, I could visit my father right now. Uh, come on, Sebastian, you earned enough money. You could probably check out for one or two years, have uh, still enough money to be able to go to go part time and see your father more. That's not the issue either. Besides, people with universal base income would probably just as well go working on other projects as others and would have no time in the, as a result. So that's not the point either. The third one. Yeah, at the global level. You know, right now, putting you over the poverty line, that's what most systems in Europe do. If you're below the poverty line, you're part for the social state and you get money that puts you right above the poverty line. It's just also shameful and it's also not treating you with dignity. And that's a different story and a different reason why debating universal based income is really that critical. The spirit I very much agree with. I don't think it's practical. I don't think it works. And that pains me to say but I think we need something similar in spirit, but a different solution for poverty. Universal base income, unfortunately, won't cut it. Sebastian. I'm going to say something that, that you always love. I agree with you that it's not the entire solution. However, I disagree that it's not one means to uh, solving the poverty problem. Other means include education, for instance. So, uh, by the way, it was not my father. It's my grandfather who's 94. I'm thankfully not at that old myself. Um, so it was my grandfather. And yes, I was not necessarily referring to my personal case, but in general for people anywhere around the planet who have 
uh, dependents or family members who are old, who are sick and may want to visit them. Poverty line, you think the, the subsidies that exist already are enough? Actually not. 10% of the French population, since I know that better, is under the poverty line despite the, sub, the subsidies from the state. 10% that's 6 million people in France alone below the poverty line, which I think is 800 euros a month per uh, family unit. So that means 10%, 6 million people in that supposedly rich country do not have enough to eat. They actually have food stamps. They have to go to charities. They have to go to the whatever various organizations, NGOs. So we, we, we are really talking about these ones. And for various reasons, complex administration system, um, they may not qualify for various eligibility reasons. They don't qualify uh, for all the subsidies. So yes, it would actually help these people first and foremost. So yes, defend the motion with me, dear listeners, and vote for the motion. So that's it. Another one in the can. In yeah. The box. And now is that, that how old, is it the fiftieth debate? I don't know. I don't remember. Number. I lost track of the number of the ones that we're recording. So I can sense that you're leaning in theory towards the motion and you struggle to say yes to the practice, but I suspect that you're you won't be too difficult to convince that we can try it out. So here's the thing. Um I like the idea. Although, when I look at universal basic income, I think the core problem is still that we live in a capitalistic society. And the core assumption that we make is, you're not worth anything if you don't produce value. And by value, we mean you exchange your time against, uh, against money. And that your time being used as smart as possible and as productive as possible. I think this is at the core of the problem. Uh, because this is what's going to go away with automation. That being said, I would just go ahead and try to do it at a country level because I really think that doing a small experiment in some random village with a selected group of people that tells you just one little thing and that, uh, that is if I give my people money without asking for anything in exchange, are they from then on sitting lazily on their asses or are they continue to doing something? That's the one thing that's being tested. And thankfully, um, what comes out of that is no people are still doing things. And that is, for me, enough of a signal to just go ahead and try it already. But you have to try it at a country level the least, and you have to try it full force, not just for a subset of people. Fair enough. Um, and there's one thing I, I have a slightly different opinion on, is that the, the pressure, maybe I should have mentioned this a bit more, um, the pressure to actually be productive, I don't think it exists as much as it used to especially with millennials in in the in our western world um, but you're still in order to be able to do anything you have to generate at least a bit of income and be it income coming from your parents so imagine you you're born under underneath the poverty line the reason why you're not going to university or anything else is because you struggle to get yourself afloat and because you're not going to university or having a proper training for a job uh, you stay underneath the poverty line because you have no options. So this is a vicious cycle. And the vicious cycle is break, broken through by having money available through your parents or through the state. And so the idea of universal based income is, hey, we give you that kickstart. And my fear is that this kickstart is worth nothing in a moment's notice because the markets will just eat it up. Thank you for listening. Uh, you know what you have to do. You go on todebate.net to vote. Uh, this is the most important thing to vote for the motion, motion so I can be happy. Or against it so or against I can it, be happy. So I can be unhappy. Thanks for listening. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>